All right. Thank you, Kenneth, for joining us. We have another round of our interviews that we are doing at PLRB Claims Conference in partnership with Profile Gorilla. We're talking to some TPAs, some managed repair programs. So we are joined by Kenneth Knoll this time around. He is from Eberol. So I'm just going to toss it right over to you and have you introduce yourself and share a little bit about Eberol. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, so Kenneth Knoll with Eberol, as you said, um, not traditionally a firm you would recognize for managed repair or mm -hmm. full TPA services, really. Yep. Um, it's really something that's happened in the last few years. And just six months ago, we actually embarked and launched uh, our own managed repair solution. Right. Um, a bit of our own take on the offering in this yep. space. Um, so it is the Flex MRP. Um, so we have a platform that runs the assignment process, obviously partnering with you all on the credentialing side of things. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, taking it to, to carriers actively, um, onboarding customers as we speak, which is really exciting. Very good. Um, and growing the network across the country. All right. There's a lot happening in the space. So what do you see as the biggest pain point on your side of the fence with, uh, being a network? What's the biggest pain point you see? So I think biggest pain point we're looking to address um, that, you know, we see for mm -hmm. both carriers and providers um, is point of engagement. There's jobs coming from all different directions, different assignment systems, yep. right? Different things that the providers have to keep up with. Yep. So I think it's a huge challenge for them. It's a challenge for for TPAs really as well, yep. because you have different carrier preferences for where they want mm -hmm. assignments coming from, how they want them documented, how they want estimates written. And so that's what we've really worked hard with, how we went to market on. Let's keep it as streamlined and consolidated as possible. Sure. We don't stretch too far into the process management itself, because yep. we also see that contractors have tools they prefer. And there's, yes. there's always tools that do similar things. So we don't prescribe any of that. We're all about get an assignment out there in a very fluid and seamless way, regardless of which carrier it came from uh, and regardless of which provider it's going to. Um, so that's where we're focused the majority of our efforts. I think the other um, piece that kind of ties in with that is the, the providers have too many masters that they have to answer mm -hmm. to, right? <laughs> um, yeah. and, and we saw that pain. We recognize that pain. And that's where we're trying. And we've been successful so far. So won't say it can always stay this way, but to the best of our ability, we keep the process the same. The expectation, okay. the guidelines, generally the same. Of course, you've got different yep. estimating systems, but again, trying to keep that as expected and in line as, as possible with the providers. Okay, so you kind of teed up my next question. Well, so what are some, what are like the top three things that providers or contractors need to do to be successful in your network? Um, respond quickly. Okay. So that's one sure. of the number one metrics yep. we track. Because again, our, our focus is point of engagement. Mm -hmm. And so fast response times, um, you know, depending on service, could be any yep. time of day, some some offerings not. Um, service responsiveness from a policyholder perspective, I would say is number two. So we track sentiment throughout the process as well as ratings. Okay. And so it's, it's really important that they're responsive to any policyholder feedback because we provide the ability for a policyholder to signal whether they're happy or dissatisfied with something, which is meant to give people the opportunity to engage before there's a review or sure. a bad outcome. Um, so that's the biggest piece to ultimately get good reviews that honestly moves you up in ranking. Because when we work with carriers, um, they prescribe their own panels, right? Yep. And right. they can sort by what they consider most important. That is often cost for a lot of people, but quickly becomes quality or satisfaction when you surface that to them. Okay. And so we've made that really easy to see. Um, and I think the last piece is, um, you know, document the charge as well. You know, as long as that's there, um, we play no role in, in looking any, over anyone's shoulder to do that. Okay. Um, we're more about the connection point, but we want carriers to know that providers on our network do substantiate the billings well. We facilitate ease of billing but okay. they still need to document it well. And so that I'd say is the number three. So on the topic of billing, do um, do providers need to be using Xactimate, Simbility? Do they, can they have custom price lists? What does that look like? So we're agnostic from that perspective. Okay. Um, that is the one area where, I mean, carriers dictate for us, yeah. right? Um, so we're there to serve them, um, whatever they've standardized on, that's guidelines we set for either system. Okay. Um, and there's plenty of assignments that don't need either. Right. They don't need yes. Xactimate. They don't need stability. Yep. Um, and, you know, I think that's something different about our approach to the network as well. And Mark Deckard, who oh. are um, director of our network management, he kind of ref refers to this all the time. Most networks focus on the 80 percent, the 80 percent of assignment and provider types that will you know, satisfy the common needs from at EMS and repair. 
we also have everything in between. And there's a lot of those in between assignment types that just yeah. don't use those systems. Sure. They don't need to be there. So yep. again, we don't force them um, and really trying to appeal to a single point of engagement, regardless of the specifications a carrier may have. Okay. All right. So why are TPAs and managed repair programs part or an important part of the claims ecosystem overall? What role do you see them playing in this whole ecosystem of a claim? I think that's evolved. So I think networks were born out of lack of technology uh -huh. to a large I, extent. Like it needed to be there. Contractors are slow to adopt. That's yeah, and 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 even the carriers, even more so okay. in some cases, right? Um, just because they're challenged too, right? There's yeah. a lot more they have to deal with. Um, and so I think TPAs, MRPs were that extra extension of of engagement and facilitation that had to be there because technology wasn't quite where it could have needed to be yep. to be less hands-on or, or have less oversight. And that's where we've seen a change and why our strategy is a little bit different now because it can be with technology to create that connectivity, not need as much manual follow-up and oversight and engagement because the platform can facilitate that and good contractors don't need that, right? And so we we want that to float to the top. Yes. We want to make that process easy. Um, and so again, I think the role now has shifted a little more to um, what you all have done is standardize the credentialing side of things, right? Um, we want to and are doing the same for the assignment side of things. Okay. And so I think with that role, we actually lean a little more to the technology side than mm -hmm. the service component in terms of oversight. Um, and then where we play a more traditional role in that is we will, from our TPA servicing perspective, um, provide file review and those services, but it's not part of our assignment and provider engagement process. That's more if we're doing your TPA work, yep. we'll make that additional service available. Um, so we try to compartmentalize that to make what we're really focused on the network side is just getting jobs out there and done and separating that from really claims management. I think it, I think it morphed into, we aren't just your TPA doing your repair network work, we're managing your claims and we want to say, well, we manage claims, but we also separately have mm -hmm. sort of modular connectivity to a network. Okay. All right. So I'm guessing that technology is going to be part of this next answer. Maybe I know you're a little right. newer into this, but yeah. what do you, what are you doing to um, keep contractors engaged, retain the contractors that you bring on board are the ones that you want to keep in your network? Yeah. Um, well, so fortunately we're pretty new in, in that yeah. world. So we haven't, yeah had a lot of challenge there just yet. Um, it'll come with time. You know, I think the biggest piece is keeping it a seamless, easy process. Yep. Um, if that's there, the work's desirable. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are network models that, um, at least we hear, um, aren't as desirable. And if they, or have turned down, or maybe would turn down if there were better ways to engage and get the work. Um, so I think that's mostly, you know, our approach to keeping it. Um, the other thing we do, this is unique um, to a lot of networks. We make payment easier. We make invoicing easier. Um, you know, that's the last thing. That's a big deal. That's the last thing somebody wants to do. Like if, yeah. if you talk to a contractor, they don't want to have to go sell work and they don't want to have to bill it. Yep. They want to do it. And so we help create the connectivity to get the work. And then on the back end, we help bill it. And so that's automatically created through our system. We handle all of the invoicing. We act as their effective collection agent. We're the agent of payee. Uh, we collect from carriers um, in single bills. We're the 1099 payee. We remit everything to providers. We handle all the tax reporting for the carriers, and it's all electronic payments. So no chasing payments, no follow-up on invoice documentation. It's all generated in our system. They upload their scope support. It's all there. And so you can shave weeks off of collection yes. times just by that, and it makes it easier for carriers. They like it. They have a single point of cons or consistent invoicing process, and then providers have the ease of payment. So... I think that's a part providers really like. I think over time, um, as we extend that, because we do have some things we can't support because we are collecting payment, um, some models like uh, multi-party checks, um, which we have some solutions we're going to work on there. Um, I think as we're more pervasive with that model, it'll make it really sticky and, and attractive for providers. Okay. All right. Ed, anything that you want to add into this? Yeah, just a quick question. I mean, I know Neville has a great brand, an existing yeah. brand with, with the industry. You know, how do you, how do you think that, that that positive brand that is existing will help benefit the contractors joining your, you know, your managed care network? Great question. A couple ways. Uh, first is we are anywhere from FNOL 
to payment. Mm -hmm. And so we can help get jobs, not just in repair, but right. up at the very front end EMS, right? And so we're trusted to be the FNOL sure. provider, right? We're trusted to do the IA work. Um, you know, there's, there's that knowledge of actual adjusters in the field that are doing the estimates sure. that have the knowledge that are now communicating directly with the contractor instead of there being a separate middle person that may have never been on site. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah, it's, it's more of a, I guess, collaborative model in that sure. sense. Um, sure. And then, yeah, you know, having the ability to support on any file review that is needed. Um, yeah. It's great to be part of, of Ebrel on that front. Um, yeah. It's really full service. So what are your plans from here? Since you're a little newer on the scene, where are you going from here? Gosh. Um, Maybe near future, next year, next two years. Where do you, what's your vision? Yeah. So right now we're really focused on expansion of the network. Yep. Um, so we are coastal um, for the most part today. We're filling in gaps in between. We have franchises that cover the country, but um, kind of to the earlier comment of getting the 20%, mm -hmm. um, we've got a lot of work to do to fill in those gaps um, okay. throughout the country with not just your franchises, right? I mean, we want any local provider of any type to to be someone in the area we can we can work with so we do that two ways um obviously working with you all we work with carriers um so as they provide their network lists of who they've used in the past we can onboard them and bring them in um so that's probably focus number one um longer term i would say more connectivity to the different systems where jobs come from mm -hmm. because again we want to make that assignment process easy the more we can create connectivity to other systems that need to make those assignments. So not just your estimating systems, your claims management systems. Sure. Because again, there's a lot of assignment types that don't need to go to an estimating platform. Mm -hmm. How do those get in in a seamless way to providers that can receive them, right? So yeah, I'd say those are really on our near-term roadmap for focus. Um, and we'll let that guide where we go next, awesome. I think. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you, Kenneth, very much. We appreciate your time. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.